Good afternoon. Join Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stories about hands-on learning is something we take a lot of pride in in our show. From 4-H'ers to farmers, learning by doing is awesome. So when we heard about similar efforts to involve UVM students in experiencing offering service learning opportunities, we had to check it out. In a moment, we'll hear about these wide-ranging experiences that launch students into life beyond UVM. First, let's hear about a project involving engineers, recycling, and so much broken glass. Across the Fences, Rebecca Gollan tells us more. In this geotechnical engineering lab at the University of Vermont, students learn the ins and outs of soil mechanics. We learn about recognizing different types of soils and their engineering properties, such as how dense they can be, how light or heavy they are, how quickly water can pass through it, um, and how quickly they can settle, and how much, uh, how strong are they so we can make slopes out of them and make or make excavations in them. This sort of testing is important for things like planning construction projects and water management systems. The students in this class first learned how to evaluate soil properties. We are learning how to perform different types of soil tests that we would do out in the field, um, and that includes permeability tests, sieve analysis, compaction. It's been awesome getting to learn all the tests that you need to do as an engineer. Like, we're doing it in a lab, but I can see us having to do it in the real field. Like, if you're on a project, like, looking at the soil and being like, oh, is that permeable? Does that need compaction? While these students will come away with a thorough understanding of soil mechanics, the sand-like material they're working with on this day did not come from nature. It came from the Chittenden Solid Waste District's Material Recovery Facility, or MRF. This sand is pulverized glass. We're getting a baseline through the students here with our basic tests, and then they're going a little farther and seeing if they can do a contamination analysis for us, um, and they're looking at you know, permeability, things that are important for uh, construction materials. Josh Tyler oversees the management of materials at the MRF. Right now, the pulverized glass, or PGA, is used in road construction projects. Tyler is hoping to find new ways and new markets to use the material. We're looking to expand our markets so the potential uses for this sand, it's PGA. And so one of the things we need to do is run a lot of materials testing and engineering specific tests. Uh, a graduate of UVM's engineering department himself, Tyler knew just where to look for help with that testing. Josh uh, happened to call me a couple of weeks before the semester started. And he said, we are producing crushed recycled glass, and they were trying to find if there are more uses for it. And we, we were talking about some of the research that could be done, and then it clicked to me, and I said, you know, I'm teaching the class on soil, soil properties, um, and this material is very soil-like. Uh, would you be open to using this in our class? And with that, the partnership was born. To get a better sense of the materials they would be working with, the students took a tour of the MRF. Was that your first time at a facility like that? That was my first time at a facility like that. It was a very eye-opening experience as far as what really happens to our recycling. I mean, you get, you kind of have a picture of it in your mind, but once you go there, it's not the same thing that you're imagining. So, first material we're gonna talk about in the last material is glass. It was really great to just like see what, from start to finish, really what the process is like. So when you recycle something, where does it go? How is it measured? Then how is it sorted? What are the machine components of that? What are the people components involved with that? Um, and then what the material actually looks like when it comes out um, of the facility, which is something I never knew before. For Tyler, bringing the class to the MRF was a key component, not only to help the students understand the waste stream, but also 
to open their eyes to potential careers. You know, there's a lot of opportunities in the recycling world for engineers to, to really try and find solutions on where recycling goes or how to process it better. The lessons have hit home for these future engineers. A lot of things in engineering are very wasteful, and so we create all these carbon emissions and all this stuff, like with construction and everything. But in reality, we can be using a material that we have already used. And it's really opened my world to being able to see that and see how it could be used in potential projects and everything um, in the place of other material that would be typically used. But this class is designed to have a larger impact than merely opening students' eyes to new ideas. It's designated as a service learning course, meaning that the students work with a community partner on a real-world problem. Let's see once water starts flowing through the material if that creates an issue. Okay? For DeWalker, that collaboration is an important part of educating his students. I'm a big fan of service learning classes because I think uh, it gives the class a purpose, what they are learning. Uh, they get to work with someone who is um, from the community and as engineers, uh, most civil and environmental engineers work in public sector and it's a service oriented uh, profession. And it is nice to get exposure to that early on in the classroom setting as well. As for the students, they appreciate working on something that will be useful beyond their class. I feel really good about that aspect of the service learning project just because it, it gives us a goal in the end rather than just, uh, just an arbitrary goal of, of ultimately getting that grade. You, you actually see where that work is being input and used for a specific purpose. It definitely makes the class more meaningful. It's less of like you show up to lab and you learn a technique where you're not really sure when in your life you'll ever use it, um, especially since we all come from pretty different backgrounds and um, are expecting to do different things with our careers. Teaching students new ways to think about old problems and getting them ready for the real world by giving them real world experience. At the University of Vermont, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Thank you, Rebecca. That's a very current problem. This is great. I love this story. Uh, one footnote about our story is that nearly half of UVM seniors who graduated in 2018 took at least one service learning course while they were there. Joining me now is the person who makes this all happen. Su Susan Munkris is the director of UVM's Office of Community Engaged Learning. Welcome. It's so great to have you here. What a wonderful story! And uh, to give us a you know a little bit bigger picture um, of this of this um, of service learning, uh, you've taught classes before. So so give us a little bit more of what the students get out of it. I mean, it just seems like such a perfect matching. Absolutely. The students get so much out of service learning. As you heard in the video, these students felt like it gave them a career connection to what they were doing in class. But more than that, it gave them a sense that they weren't just learning for the test. They weren't just learning to memorize. They were learning for a skill that would contribute to the community and mm -hmm. thinking about their, their discipline in a broader context of what it contributes to the greater good. You know, how the student mentioned how engineers contribute to carbon emissions, and yet here they could be learning how to recycle and reuse and contribute to a more sustainable future for within the, right. their work as engineers. It's fabulous. So what kind of students is it? It's, so half, half of UVM students did something. Is this close, all departments or certain kind of Close to half. Um, that's a great question. There are units on campus that have um, made service learning a requirement. Oh. Students in engineering, uh, civil and environmental engineering, take a senior capstone above and beyond the course you saw. Students in community development and applied economics mm. take service learn a service learning course at least one before they graduate. And students in our Rubenstein School of the Environment also take a required senior capstone. So right. in those three units, um, there's an expectation that every student will have a hands-on community contributing experience. Well, let's take a look at, at, at some of those. You brought some pictures sure. from a few past projects. We have a few more minutes. Absolutely. What do we got here? This is a student working out of the School of Education, which also hosts a great deal of service learning. And this student is tutoring a Bhutanese mm -hmm. refugee for his citizenship exam. Fabulous. Next. Yeah. This is a student in art history out of the, our arts and sciences, um, working with young people around art education. Perfect. 
Um, here are students out of community development and applied economics. Um, this is a while ago, but I love the photo participating <laughs> in cleanup after Hurricane Irene. Oh my goodness, wow, terrific. And here are students out of the College of Nursing who are implementing a reminiscence theory, uh, reminiscence therapy program with seniors at Quarry Hill. Oh, wow, terrific. And lastly, homework help at the Boys and Girls Club um, or the O'Brien Community Center in Winooski, Vermont. Well, these are all fabulous projects, and you know that both sides just really get it. So we know that this, what the students get out of it to some degree. Mm -hmm. what, what about businesses? How so community partners or businesses or whoever is partnered with a service learning class benefit because the students are either providing direct service, like they're showing up and doing homework help, they're right. doing after school tutoring, or they're creating some kind of project or deliverable. Like in the case of um, Dr. DeWolker's class, the students will produce a report on the properties of the recycled glass. Wow. But in addition to those benefits, our partners say that they really like being around young adults. They like being around that energy. They like seeing fresh perspectives. They like that intergenerational connection. And for them, be having a sense of contributing to the education of young people in their field gives them a real value. Because right, it takes a little bit of work to also make that work within within Absolutely. your business. But but it's a, real, it's a real two-way way street. Very much so. Um, and uh, about how many classes are there? There are a lot of classes. A hundred classes every wow. year at UVM taught by about 60 faculty reach 40 to 45 percent of our student body every year. That's fantastic. Well, thank you for bringing this in. If businesses and organizations are interested in connecting with you and getting those young people working on projects, what do they do? Our website and phone number are on the screen. And if it's not an appropriate service learning project, I'm happy to refer people to other offices at UVM that might work with internships or co-op learning or other kinds of engaged experiential learning. So it's a little different from internships because it's a whole class working on something. That's right. That's okay. exactly right. Awesome. Susan Munkris of uh, Service, the Director of Service Learning. Community Learn, so Engaged community Learning. Community Engaged Learning. Thank yes. you so much You're for that welcome. correction. <laughs> and thank you for coming in today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard.